Hi, welcome back to the Maker's Cave. I'm Steve, and today we're going to continue with the Eagle Moss Eleanor build. Uh, this will be issue 8, which has uh, stages 27, 28, 29, and 30. Uh, it looks like we're going to do some differential work. We have one leaf spring. Uh, we're going to do some more disc brake work. Uh, we modified and painted that, uh, while sh and we'll do that again. And we have one half of a rim. Um, it also included uh, with this shipment, or actually wasn't included with the shipment, it was a separate shipment, but it came in right behind this, was the curbside model of the uh, Eleanor. Uh, I haven't even taken this out of the box, I haven't even looked at it, so uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, when we bring you guys closer, we're, we'll take this out of the box and we'll see exactly what this looks like. Here is the curbside model of the Eleanor that they sent. Uh, it's one of your bonus gifts that you get during the build. So let's get this out of here and take a look at it, see what it's really like. And there it is. It is die cast metal. Oh, looks like it's held in there. Yep, a little screw under here. Okay, there it is. Oh, and treats. Don't eat these. So here's the model. It, the wheels do are free moving. Uh, they don't move left to right. They are fixed. Like I said, this is a curbside model, so I don't expect too much detail or functionality out of this. Um, we'll take a look at the bottom first, because we saw that before. So it looks like they did, did some coloring. That they painted the exhaust silver. It looks like they painted the uh, transmission silver. Um, and the gas tank. Which, that's kind of curious, because in the model we're building, the gas tank is black, along with the chassis that's black. Uh, but they actually chromed this out and you know what i gotta tell you i kind of like the contrast of this chrome on here uh, maybe we'll go back and paint our gas tank uh, a, a silver or chrome color on the real model there's the roof there's the front there are some plastic headlights and the fog lights and on the rear there are some plastic uh, red lenses um, oh uh, the doors do open let's see if we can get you a close-up shot of that and then on the I'm trying to get you here there you go and in the interior Red steering wheel looks like some decals for some dash gauges. And that is about it. Like I said, it is die cast. A neat little model. This would be perfect for a diorama. And as a matter of fact, I'm looking at it right here. And right here is a screw that I think holds this top chassis onto this bottom chassis. Or holds the body onto the bottom chassis. I'm wondering if for some fun we could actually maybe get these to light up, give it a little bit of life. Uh, that might be pretty cool. So there you have it. There is your bonus gift from Eagle Moss for the Eleanor build. It's a 124th scale, by the way. So now we'll go ahead and we'll start building our bigger model. All right, we are going to start on issue eight. And the first kit is going to be in. Eight is going to be kit 27 and it included part of what looks like the rear axle okay so once us take that oh it also included a couple of these springs put these aside for right now so it takes the rear axle and it wants us to bring back this part from kit 26 And we want to orient it like this. 
Actually, I'm wrong. This is included in kit 27, but it also wants us to bring, bring back from kit 26 the uh, half of the axle that was included in that kit. And it wants us to put this into here. If you recall from that kit, there are two screws right in here, here and here, and they slip down into this part. There's two grooves in the differential right here. They slide down into here. So they want us to do that and then take the half axle that was included in this kit and slide that down over those two screws. That locks it into place. So some PS05 screws here, 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 and here. I apologize for the lighting. I'm going to try and correct that in my future videos. So let's get some PSO5 screws and attach this in here. Okay, so now we have one assembled differential, or partially assembled. So that was 27. I'm going to continue with 27. I'm going to orient it like this, and now with those two springs, they want us to place them over here and over here. And then we need to get the floor pan, the floor pan from 20A. right here and they go in here oh first off let's make sure we got this oriented right it goes here yeah goes into here And they get held in with two PS11 screws. Okay, so they're in there. Flip this back over. And now we have a differential that actually shifts and moves because it's on those springs. Okay, next we're going to move on to, we're going to put this aside. Now we're moving on to 28. And it wants us to bring this back again. And the part it wants here is 28D, left spring rear holder. The pictures are very, just so you don't think it's, my, well, my camera is dark. I'm going to fix that lighting uh, for the next video. But the pictures are very dark. Everything all, it's hard to make out exactly what they're doing. So we're going to put this part right here. See if we can zoom in on that. There's that part right there. And they want it to go into what looks like here. I guess it's very hard to tell where they want that to go into. Now I think they want it to go into here. Now, obviously, if I look, there's a square right here where this, this goes in. And he wants to take the other one. The two pieces are very different. So you can see that they're very different. One is just a plain flat edge right here. That is 28C, I believe they said. That is 28C. And that goes here. And the other one is 28D. That is going to go right in there. So now they're both in here, here, and here. It wants us to secure them with some PSO5 screws.
All right, so now they're both held in there. Now it wants us to take the leaf spring that was included with this kit. I want to make sure I get this oriented the right way. Okay, so I'm looking at here. The easiest way to say is you're going to orient it this way. Okay. And according to the picture, there's three metal bands that hold the leaf springs together that are spaced fairly far apart. And they're supposed to be down on this end. And then on this end, there's also three, but they're spaced real close together. Let's see. Okay. One, two, and three. And they're supposed to go on this end. So that's how I think it's supposed to be oriented. Yep. Okay. Uh, you want to play, pay attention to detail on that one. Now you're supposed to take, also included in this kit was two pins. So we'll take them out. As you, as you can see, they're very small pins. Leave them here in the white so we can see them. Right, and in here, There's a hole, and it wants you to insert that in there. And they give you a little hint here to tell you pliers may be needed, but I'm going to see if I can get this started. There we go. I'm going to use the end of my exacto knife to push it all the way through. One end of these, and there's no way I can show you this on camera as that piece goes flying is knurled. Um, I don't know if you can hear that or not. And I think what that's for is that locks the pin into place. So that's what I'm trying to force in now, which I think now we're going to get some pliers. Okay, we now have some pliers. Let's see if we can just push that into there. And that went right in with that. And as you can see, it locks the, locks the leaf spring right in. And now we simply do the same with the other pin. So you want to make note of that, so where that neural part of that is at. Because you want that to go in last. And then we'll... Now you want to be careful putting these in because this is all plastic along here, so you don't want to flex it too much, or else you'll break it. So now that leaf spring is in there. All right, then let me do the other side. It should go quicker now that we know what we're doing. So that was stage 28. Continuing along with that, it wants us to now orient it like this and we want to take this plate piece that was included in the kit it's silver it's again plastic and this goes on top of the leaf spring right here and there's a registration pin so I guess we got that leaf spring right because that this fell right into place and this gets held in with some PS09 screws the PSO9 screws are small. Okay, that's it for 28. Now we're going to move on to 29. Before we get started on that, though, it looks like this wants to take a clevis type pin here. And it also included a pin, so we'll get that out of here. Okay. 
And again, I said it's hard for you to see on camera, but on this pin, one side is smooth. This side has some gnarling on it. So it's probably going to slide in here. Now it wants us to take this part right here. And it slides onto here. And I guess that's where this pin comes in at. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start this here. And again, we're going to take the pliers. So there's that clevis in that pin. All right. Now it wants us to bring back. Now it wants us to bring this back. And it wants us to sit there is again apologize for the lighting right in there here we go there's a hole a little square they want us to put this in here now the square of that cleavage pin we did fits in that little square just only one way so the it rocks left to right and once you have that in there it's just to hold that in there with a PSO5 screw. Hold it into place with my thumb. Screw that into place. All right, so that is in there. Now that we have that little shaft in there, it's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but it's, uh, it's a plastic tube, gets held into that, that, with that cleavage pin, and it's hollow. And the reason it's hollow is they want us to take this shaft, which came in kit 29, and it gets inserted into here And the other end goes up into this plate we installed on the differential. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. Let's see if we can get a different angle. It goes right up into there. And that gets held in with, good question, huh? That gets held in with a PSO8 screw. You just kind of got to hold on to the little silver shaft there. And yeah, that's in there. Next in stage 29 is, oh, this is where we're going to do some rotor work. with a brake caliper. Okay, now if you remember, uh, let me get one of the other wheels we did. We did some customization on these parts. Um, I cut out this section here, this little indent right here in this um, dust cover. I cut that out just to make it a little more realistic because how could the caliper possibly grab the rotor if, the, if there's something that that part is uh, covered up with the dust cover. And we also took the caliper and we painted it red. I think this was uh, Tamea's Italian red. And we took the dust cover and we painted that black. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. And just in case you missed it on the other video, I'll show you how we, we're going to do that. I'll put a link to this below. This is a little hobby saw with very fine teeth. And what we do is kind of cut along this line here, this line here, and we're going to remove all this, all this out. Let me show it to you again. 
all this right here we're going to take out. So you just use very controlled and you just cut right in here. And we come down to the other part. So that's right there. And we can use we can take the exacto knife, carefully score along the circle of the rotor. And then that just pops right out. And then just to clean this up, I take the uh, Dremel on some low speed and just just clean that up. Okay, so now we have something that looks like more of a realistic dust cover. The next thing we need to do is primer both these brakes, and then I'm going to shoot this in some black and this in the Italian red. And before you do that, you want to rub these down with some alcohol so the paint sticks really well in case there's any uh, mold residue still left on there. For the brake caliper, what I did is I primed it in Tamiya's Ultra Fine Surface Primer in white. Right, you got to make sure when you with this these parts you use the fine primer because you don't want a thick primer because the parts are so small. Now for the dust cover, I primed that in Tamiya's Ultra Fine uh, Light Gray Primer. Once the white primer on the brake caliper dried, I just shot it real quick with Tamiya's TS8. Italian red. It's a nice bright red, I think, and it really makes the wheel pop, makes it come to life. And once the gray primer dried on the dust cover, I shot it with uh, Tamiya's TS29 semi gloss black. Uh, again, I'll put the link below to all these colors I'm using. As you can see, it's I like that a lot better than the, than the gloss. And here's what I was talking about on the back. We're not going to see this in the model, but if you can see some spotting in here, after I uh, rubbed down the brake caliper and some alcohol, I, I forgot to do the brake, uh, the dust cover. So you can see there was some residual, you know, I, I guess mold release or whatever from where this was put in the mold. And that's what created this little speckle right here. But you're really not going to notice that on the model in the end. So I can live with that. I, it still looks better than everything being all one color. All right, now that we have all the customization done with these parts, it's time to put them together uh, right here in stage 29 or kit 29. And this is why I wasn't that concerned about the dimpling of this paint back here, because it wants us to take this rotor, we put the dust cover flat against the rotor here. And if you notice, there's little cutouts here. And there's a little pincher piece on here. And this just simply slides over and goes in between into one of those crevices. So now it's holding on. So now it wants us to bring back the bottom of the car. And we just simply put the wheel on. Or I'm sorry, actually put the rotor on. And there you go. Let me lift this up so you can see it. And then we move on to kit 30. We're going to put this away. Now this sits on here very loosely, so I think I'm going to take this off, put this over here, put the bottom of the car over here. Now we move on to kit 30. All right, kit 30 has us doing half a rim, so there's only three pieces here. There's the uh, 
internal rim part, central rim part, and the hub cover. Now, as usual, the hub cover we're just going to save for later. So to put this together, it's pretty simple. You've seen us do it before, seen us. Seen me do it before. The uh, central rim just falls right into here. Oops, sorry. Kind of upside down. Goes right into there. And it gets held in with three PSI. 05 screws. So that is all together. And it tells us to keep this part separate for later. And that is it for issue 10. Issue 10. Issue 8. And I guess we can summarize. So here's what we accomplished today in issue eight. We did the, uh, finished off the differential with the axle, put the leaf spring in. Uh, we did a shock, put that in here. We did the rotor and brake with customization and the paint. And we did another half a rim. Well, thanks for joining me along on this build of our Eleanor Mustang uh, from Eagle Moss. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the, the like button. And uh, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified when more come out. I'll have links below to everything that I did today, any tools or any mods I did, and I'll have a link to the Eagle Moss site. So if you want to start building this or some of their other kits, which I highly encourage, uh, the link will be below for you to follow. Until next time, thanks for stopping by the Makers Cave. I'm Steve. I'll see you at the next build.